Welcome to the Plex in Port Elgin, Ontario. Andrew Rogers here with you for Play by Play Senior Double A in the WOAA Senior Men's Double A League. Uh, Jordan McKinnon is handling the PA duties for tonight, so I am filling in for him, and I couldn't be more excited to bring you coverage of tonight's game between the number three Durham Thundercats and the number six Sogging Shores Winterhawks. Durham comes in looking to sweep the Winterhawks out of the first round of the playoffs. They currently lead this series three games to nothing. They are a tough team, and they will be a tough matchup against the Sogging Shores Winterhawks tonight. Starting in goal for the Durham Thundercats is Gallen Burt, number 29. He's 3-0 thus far. He's uh, been nothing short of spectacular for the Thundercats. Uh, starting in goal for the Soggy Shores Winterhawks is number 34, Jeff Flagler. He makes his second start of the series. He looked uh, pretty sharp in the game last night. Unfortunately, though, they were on the losing side. 4-1 was the final in game number three. We are just about ready to go here. We got the line of Andy Mitchell, Andy Fraz, and Trent Hawk, and we are underway here at the Plex in Port Elgin. Number five, Jacob Brown controls, throws it over to Ainsley, who dumps it in. It's all the way down the ice, and this is going to go for icing 10 seconds into the first period. Scratches for your Soggy Shores Winterhawks tonight are number four, Chris King. Number 12, Jay Thompson. Number 15, Mike Smales. Number 28, Curtis Johnston. And number 67, Eric Agnetta. Face off here in the Winterhawks zone. Chris Brown plays it on the boards. He's got it at the blue line. Throws it in, it hits Mitchell, and they turn the puck, they put, turn the puck through the neutral zone. Andy Fraz dumped it in. Kyler Nixon back to get it for Durham. Throws it around. It's into the middle now, and Matheson will play it ahead. Fraz with it in the neutral zone. Plays it over to Hawk. Hawk takes a shot, it's deflected, it just goes up and over the Durham net. It's into the corner now, Braz looking for it. Comes to the point, pucks in front of the net. There's a shot on Burton, he makes the save. Played with the shot from the point, it's, the, it's stopped in front and Randy Cox has it, but the net is uh, off and dislodged and we will get a stoppage here. A lot of pressure by the Soggin Shores Winterhawks there, but the net comes off, putting a stop to that. 19.09 left to go here in the first period. We're still within the first minute. We got a faceoff coming up here to the right of goaltender Gallen Bird of Durham. Kazarian loses the draw. It's in around the corner. Up on the sideboards now. It's into the neutral zone. And here comes Colin Rigney. Rigney into the corner. He has it first. He's around the net. Looking for a player to pass it to. Sends it back to the line. There's a shot from the point. Flagler with a big save. And he comes across and makes a big diving save to keep it out. Underwood now looking for it in the middle, but it's fired into the netting, and that'll put a stop to it here. 18.41 to go in the first. What a, what a couple of saves from Jeff Flagler to keep this game tied at zeros. In the Durham lineup tonight, we don't have number 12, Brandon Ray, number 15, Tanner Mighton, number 17, Mitch Betts, number 19, Dylan Hoffman, number 20, Brad Pitt, and number 25, Liam Francis. Got a face off just coming up here outside of the Durham zone. It's won by Durham. They send it up ahead. And they send it in there. And Katie's got it for Sogging Shores. Tries to get it out. It's hit at the blue line. Here comes a shot. Flagler makes the save and holds on for the face off. Jim Hutchison with the shot there for Durham. He's been very good in the series thus far. He leads the Durham Thundercats in scoring. He has two goals and three assists. Good for five points so far. Winterhawks win the draw in their own end. Tatey looking ahead. Gets it ahead to Connor Patton. Patton puts it over to James McKaig who dumps it in deep as the Winterhawks give chase. McKaig comes up with it behind the net. Looking for an outlet. However, it's a run around the boards and this will go all the way down the ice. No icing as Tatey has to come back and get it with a man on. Tatey sends it around the boards now. It's intercepted by the Durham Thundercats and they turn it the other way, but it's intercepted by James McKaig and up he comes, one on two. He's gonna need some help. Unfortunately, he has the puck stripped away from Kyler Nixon and he turns it the other way. The captain of the Durham Thundercats into the zone, sends it out, big block by Miles McLean. He makes two of them and he keeps it out. Kyler Nixon now at the point, trying to get away from McDermott, sends it in deep. Graham sends it to the point. Dean Nixon can't keep it in and they're gonna to have to touch up on the delayed offside. 
Justin Ainsley in behind the net, number six for the Winter Hawks. He starts away, up onto the boards now. It's up at the Durham Thundercats uh, blue line. Miles McLean to Brent McDermott, nice pass in front. Oh, the backhand just goes wide. McDermott almost had him beat. Elder knocked down in front and it's out in the neutral zone and Ainsley's gonna send it right back in on Burt. Burt's got no goal stick and he makes the save and hangs on and stops it here. 17.04 to go here in the first period. Soggin Shores looks really good early on. Lots of pressure that, uh, you know, hopefully will result in a goal. They need one in this series. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a real struggle for the Soggin Shores uh, Winter Hawks to get the first goal in any of the games in this series. But uh, a big one here would be the first goal of this game. We got a face off here is going to come up to the right of the uh, Durham goaltender Gatlin Burt. Got a line of Andy Mitchell, Andy Fraz, and Trent Hawk for the Winter Hawks with Nick Quaid and Josh Hopkins on the points. Won by the Winter Hawks back to Quaid. He's, he just manages to keep it in. Hawk now looking for it in the Winter Hawks zone, but it comes out to the neutral zone and they'll reset. Quaid looking ahead, but that's intercepted by Chris Brown. Makes the move to get around Hopkins, but it goes into the corner. Quaid on to Randy Cox, trying to get him, the, uh, trying to get the puck from him. In comes uh, Andy Mitchell to forecheck, but it's back to the point now. Here's a shot. That's just wide of the uh, Winterhawk net. It's all the way around now. Schmidt keeps it in at the point, sends it around. Randy Cox on the sideboards for the, for the Thundercats. Sends it in around the net, broken up there, and Quaid will play it off the glass and out. And it's all the way down the ice into the Durham zone. Back to get it is uh, defenseman Jeff McMillan of the Durham Thundercats, and he'll start away. Fires the pass into the neutral zone. It's tipped by Cox and into the Winterhawks zone. Durham gets a change in. Pucks all the way back down the ice as Menard failed to come up with it, and that'll be a Winterhawk icing. And we'll get a faceoff back into the Winterhawks zone. Just a little bit shy of four minutes into the first period. We are still scoreless. We're also following other games around the league. We'll continue to keep you updated on those as we get them. When our Thundercats win the draw, they get a decent shot on net, but that is turned aside. Menard now coming ahead. Sends it up to Brian Kazarian and goes to the net, looking for the pass. Kazarian fans, Menard into the crease, and the net is knocked off once again. And the play will be stopped here, and we'll get a faceoff. Other series happening tonight. We got the Clinton Radars and the Huron East Centenaires. They played game four of their series. Clinton currently leads the series three games to nothing. That one gets underway at 8.30. We have the Ripley Wolves and the Milverton four-wheel drives. That one also gets started at 8.30. It's game four, Ripley leading that series two games to one. And then Tilsonburg plays against Shelburne tonight. They lead that series two games to nothing. So we'll keep you up to date on all of that action as we go forward on the TST out of town schedule for this evening. We're also following one of nine on the ice in the NHL tonight. Leafs and Senators, last check to his three nothing Leafs, ha ha. Winterhawks control in their own end. Tatey sends it towards the net, it's uh, deflected, but here comes, oh, and Tatey takes a spill, leaving a chance, and unfortunately no shot on net there. Flagler has to make a save though, and it is cleared all the way out, and this will go for icing. A very interesting play is Tatey on the, on the back skate took a spill, allowing the Durham player to come in and get a quality chance. However, it was thwarted when he, did, when he uh, fanned on the, on the play. Uh, we're still scoreless here, 15-27 to go here in the first period. Here at the Plex in Port Elgin. Chris Brown wins, gets a, play, a chance off the faceoff, and they can't bury a great opportunity for Durham to get the first goal, but it's turned aside. Randy Cox now has it for the Durham Thundercats in the zone. Sends it ahead, it's intercepted by James McKagan. He gets it up to Alex Kuntz. Kuntz trying to get past Matheson. He's unable to do so, it's deep now. Kyler Nixon gives it back to Matheson. Matheson sends it ahead to Quinton Bruce. Bruce sends it over to Chris Brown, two on three. There's a shot hit, nice save by Flagler, a great blocker save. And it's cleared out to the Durham line. Loughlin sends it over to Van Dyke. He sends it in, Flagler will hold it there, and Connor Patton controls for the Soggy Shores Winterhawks. 
He'll flip it out, looking for James McCaig, but it's a little far, and Van Dyke has it. Sends it over to Wagland. That's tipped in. Here we go, now we got a two on two. Here's a shot. Nice glove save, Jeff Flagler, and he holds on for the face off. Excellent chance for the Thur Durham Thundercats, but it's thwarted by the glove hand of Jeff Flagler. Durham Th Thundercats team is big, they are tough, they are fast, and they are very, very good. <laughs> They were 16 and four over the season, and it is translated into three straight wins over the Winterhawks here in the first round. Lachlan Elder sends it over to Josh Hopkins. He looks to get out, makes a nifty move to get around the Thundercats uh, defender, but his pass to Miles McLean just misses him, and it's into the D Thundercats zone. Van Dyke sends it in around. That's intercepted by Elder, and he gets a shot. That just misses. McLean turns and shoots. That goes wide. Early on, the Thunder uh, Winterhawks can't seem to hit the net. Long shot by Hopkins from the point is smothered by Burton. He'll hold on for a faceoff. Some solid opportunities from the Winterhawks as they look really sharp, getting a lot of chances in this game, uh, as are the Durham Thundercats. It's been a back and forth uh, affair to start this, uh, this uh, what has been an exciting series. Uh, Durham winning the first two games by a goal in each one of those games, but of course winning 4-1 in game number three to take a commanding 3-0 series lead. Nick Quaid keeps it into the point. Underwood trying to, trying to, Underwood trying to control at the blue line and it hops out and he brings it back in and it's called offside. Menard taking the shot after the whistle, which draws the uh, ire of the Durham fans here at the Plex in Port Elgin but we'll get a face-off just inside of the Durham zone. 13.49 to go here in the first period. Still scoreless. Kazarian loses the draw, but it comes to Menard. Menard shot, nice save. Gallenbert with the blocker. Menard into the corner, tries to come up with it, but cannot. Josh Hopkins there, but he can't corral it, and it's into the neutral zone. Quaid gets it on the backhand, sends it ahead. We got a three on two possibly, but it is offside again. Called at the blue line here. And the uh, faceoff will just come outside the blue line. Our referees tonight are Marshall Kopp and Spencer Rowland. And our linesmen are Josh Ackworth and JP Herview. They're both from, Lo they're all from London tonight. No uh, referees from Durham. I hear they were pretty controversial in game number one. Faceoff just outside the Durham zone here. Matheson skates it ahead, finds Graham on the side. Graham brings it in, shoots it in deep. Flagler playing it around the corner. Graham has it now. Sends it towards Flagler, but it goes into the corner and Kuntz goes after it. Patton plays it in around the net and Trevor Smith will come up with it. Smith headlines to Alex Kuntz. Kuntz in across the, long, in across the zone, gets a shot on Burt. Burt makes the save and the keg plays it with a high stick on the rebound and that puck will be whistled down. And we'll get a uh, face off here. Most likely will come outside the zone as uh, McKeg clearly with the high stick as he batted the rebound down trying to get it towards the net. We have 13 minutes to go here in the first period. Want to also mention our game sponsor, Gord's Imprints and Design. Check them out in Port Elgin uh, for all your custom apparel need. They are quite good and they make some snazzy outfits. Uh, <laughs> Trevor Smith dumps it in. Gatlin Burt stops it with his glove and plays it in behind. Matheson will start out for the Thundercats. Gets across the red line. Throws it to Randy Cox. Cox into the into the Winterhawks zone. However, the Winterhawks come out with it and it's Tre Trent Hawk. Sends it ahead. Beautiful pass to Andy Fraz. He comes in alone. One on two. Gets a chance. Gets towards the net, but his opportunity is thwarted there. Great defensive play by Kyler Nixon, the captain. Chance in front now, Fries throws it over to Mitchell. Shot, great save. Gatlin Burt with the blocker on Andy Mitchell. Hawk has it in the corner, throws it to Mitchell down low. Mitchell cycles to Andy Fries and heads towards the net. Fries looking to put it out front, but cannot. Matheson with the interception. Mitchell comes up with it for the Winterhawks in the Durham Thundercats zone. Trying to make a move, trying to find somebody. Ainsley to the front of the net, can't come up with it. Burt with the poke check, and the Thundercats will go the other way. Ahead is Quinton Bruce, number 23. And across the zone, leaves it for Ben uh, Chris, Chris Brown. 
Bruce to Brown. Shot is uh, tipped away by Tatey, and it's into the corner. Mitchell will just throw it down, and the Winterhawks will get a much needed change here. Van Dyke turns it around for the Thundercats, sends it in on Flagler. He turns that aside, and the puck is batted up into the netting, and we'll get another stoppage here. 11.28 to go here in the first period. We are at the Plex in Port Elgin. Durham Thundercats and the Sogging Shores Winterhawks. Matchup of three versus six here in the WOA Senior AA Men's Quarterfinals. Face off just outside, needs to be dropped again. As the referee didn't drop it properly. Excuse me, the linesman. McLean will take the draw here with Elder and McDermott. Longwin tries to send it in and that hits the light stanchion. Boy, if that put out a light, we'd be here for hours. But the faceoff will come just outside. The Winterhawk zone will do it all over again. McLean puts it up and puts it up and goes after it. Sorted away by the Th Thundercats, and we have a two-on-one coming here. And that's a great save. Dean Nixon on the two-on-one throws it on Flagler. He makes a wonderful save. And back comes Elder. Elder across the Thundercat blue line. Tries to go to the net. All around the net he goes. Trying to find an outlet, but cannot. He's knocked down. And the Thundercats will turn it aside, turn it up. This won't go for Ice and Jacob Brown has it now. Sends it around the net to Nick Quaid. Quaid looking to make a play on the boards. Cannot. His puck is in his skates. He's being pressured there. But ahead comes Elder. Elder avoids a check and throws it into the Thundercats zone, but it's turned back. Ahead is Graham. Graham. Has Graham going to the net, and Flagler with a wonderful glove save, and he keeps that one out, and we are still scoreless. Hopkin turns it ahead. Menard up ahead, almost a two-on-one opportunity there, but the puck goes off of Underwood's stick, and they go the other way. And across the line, puck is thrown towards the, the center ice, but Underwood comes up with it. He's back into the Thundercat zone. He stops up, looking for an outlet. Tries to make the pass across, and Rigney makes a great block to thwart that opportunity. Tatey throws it to Underwood. Underwood in the middle. Trevor Smith looking to get the puck, but he has it thrown away. That's McMillan on the defense. He, throw, he knocked the puck off of Trevor Smith's stick and, and stopped that opportunity, but we're going to get a penalty here, and the penalty's going to go to Trevor Smith for the high stick. 9.47 to go here in the first period, and we have our first penalty. So the penalty will be to Trevor Smith for high sticking and the Thundercats will go to work on the power play. Number 24, Trevor Smith. Two minutes for high sticking. Brown has it on the half boards, throws it towards the net, it's over the net and back towards the line. Quentin Bruce has it now, throws it to Randy Cox. Cox over to Chris Brown, but he fires it wide on the power play still. Braz has it at the blue line and gets it out. Thundercats are gonna have to reset here. Jacob Brown. Has it on the side. Mitchell trying to get it out, but it hits a stick, or hits a skate, rather. Bruce has it at the blue line. Sends it over to Kyler Nixon. Nixon over to Brown. Brown looking for an outlet. Takes the shot and scores! Chris Brown has the goal for the Thundercats on the power play. And that'll make it 1-0 Durham. For Chris Brown, it's his third goal of the postseason, third obviously of this series, has the Thundercats out in front. So that's Brown from Bruce and Nixon at 10.55, and third Durham is up one to nothing. Koontz throws it on the boards. Longlin stops it at the line and fires it in, but it's high and wide, and Kutz will try it again. Over to Longlin. He plays it on the boards, and it's ahead to Justin Graham. Throws it over to Justin Graham. Shot. Great kick save from Jeff Flagler, and it's a 1-0 game still. Back in the Durham zone, Kyler Nixon has it now. He's going to go for a skate here, trying to reset, and he sends it over to Matheson. Matheson to Kyler Nixon on the boards. 
Trevor Smith has him lined up and he drives him into the boards. McDermott now, one on two the other way, looking for help. Trying to find a guy to pass it to. Throws it in front, Mitchell, or McLean has it off of his stick, but he cannot come up with it. Trevor Smith with the hit, and it's out. Tatey has it now in the Winterhawks zone. Tatey ahead to Trevor Smith. Smith finding the McDermott at the line. McDermott, one on three, trying to come up with something, but he's ultimately stopped. 7.33 to go here, still 1-0 Durham. And across the line, shot on net by Terpstra. That goes just wide. The puck is deep now. Terpstra looking for Hutchison. Finds him, but he's unable to come up with it as Elder turns it back. Underwood in across the Durham line. Gets around McMillan. Coming towards the net on the wraparound. And Burt has it pinned against the, uh, the post there. Great save by Burt on the wraparound from Blake Underwood. And it remains a 1-0 score. And that one goes to Lucky so the goal again is Brown with his third from Quentin Bruce and Kyler Nixon at 10.55 of the first period. Face off now, Kazarian. Thought he had won the draw, but they're gonna have to do it all over again here. Meanwhile, that gives Durham the opportunity to switch up their lines. They send out their top ranked unit here of uh, Kyler, uh, sorry, Randy Cox, Quentin Bruce, and Chris Brown. They have Mike Schwint and Jeff McMillan on the, on the back end. Ainsley from the point, that takes a deflection and Burt had to be sharp there. Fraz sends it in front now to Mitchell. He can't get a great shot off, but the puck is smothered by Gatlin Burt and he holds it for a face off. We got 6.59 to go here in the first period. Chances all around, but of course, Durham's top ranked power play supplies the only goal to this point. Face off is won by Durham. Quentin Bruce now in across the red line, sends it deep. Chris Brown looking for it, turns it away. Back to the uh, front of the net now, and it will come out in the neutral zone to Kyler Nixon. Nixon sends it over to Derek Matheson. Matheson back to Nixon. Nixon ahead, he has Randy Cox. Cox in across the line. In around the net. Brown almost had a chance to really knock him in the next century, but he did not for whatever reason. And Ainsley will play it ahead to Menard. Menard will look for an outlet. Take a little bit of a skate, he'll come across center. In across the line, he has a shot deflected by Chris Brown. That's no real harm. He'll get it again here. Menard in the corner, has it away, but now he's gotta come back. He knocks Quentin Bruce down to the ice with a big body check. Menard. The one-man wrecking crew out there. But he's got to be careful. Got to be careful here. So we have, oh, now he's going to get a penalty. They're going to send Menard to the box for a cross check. Out of all of that, Menard takes a penalty, and we're going to be shorthanded again here, the Winterhawks. A two-minute penalty to Chris Menard. You have to pick one in a scrum. And of course, they went with Menard. So Durham is gonna go to the power play once again. They are one for one in the game. They had the top ranked power play in the WOA Senior AA Men's League this year. And they will go to work again. We're having an issue here with Gatlin Burt not being ready here, but now we're all set apparently. Randy Cox. Jim Hutchison, Chris Brown, Quentin Bruce, and Kyler Nixon for Durham on the power play. Nixon fires. That takes the deflection off of Underwood's stick and ends up in the rafters. We'll get a face off here in the Winterhawks zone to the left of, or excuse me, to the right of Jeff Flagler. Underwood against Randy Cox. Cox wins the draw, back, back to Kyler Nixon. Nixon throws it over to Chris Brown. Brown throws it deep to Jim Hutchison. Hutchison tries to send it back to Nixon, but Underwood almost came up with it. Chris Brown sends it deep. Hutchison has it. It's in the skates of well Elder. Can't come up with it, but it's Bruce now for the Thundercats. Bruce walks to the center and he takes a shot. Hutchison on the rebound throws it wide. Comes back to the blue line. Quaid can't come up with it. Randy Cox in front. Here's another chance. Comes to the blue line. Kyler Nixon over to Quinn Bruce. Throws it into the netting. 
in behind Flagler, and that'll stop the pressure, stop the bleeding for now. We'll get a face-off. 1.17 to go in the penalty to Menard. 5.21 to go here in the first period. one nothing, Durham. Face-off's going to come outside here as that puck went right off of Bruce and out. So we're going to get a face-off here just outside Winterhawk zone. Trevor Smith comes up with it now. Throws it back to Tatey, who fires it all the way down, almost on to Gatlin Burt. Burt stops it. He'll hang on with, for a face-off with Andy Fraz right in his grill. And uh, there'll be a face-off coming up here in the Durham zone to the right of Gatlin Burt. 108 to go in the penalty to Menard. 5-12 to go here in the first period. Mitchell on the draw, wins it back, but Matheson intercepts, and they'll reset. Sends it over to Graham. It's Graham, Graham, and Trevor Houston on this power play for Durham. Yes, that's right, Justin Graham. There's two of them, two separate numbers. Matheson brings, starts it out for the Thundercats. 47 left on the power play. Graham sends it in deep. McCaig will be the first there. Graham on him. Sends it around the boards. And that one hits the netting, and it will be called on the stoppage. It did hit the netting. No question about that. And uh, they're just trying to decide who it's come off of. I believe they're saying it touched the Winterhawk player, Trevor Smith, and went out. But now they're saying that it did not. And the faceoff will then, will now come outside the zone. 38 to go on the, on the power play for Durham. Menard still in the box. 4.42 to go here in the first. one nothing for Durham. Bruce has it skip off his stick and it's gonna go all the way back into the zone. Him and Nixon trying to figure out what they're doing with the puck as McLean puts the pressure on. Chris Brown will fire it over to Bruce. Bruce in across the blue line, facing Trevor Smith. Sends it to Randy Cox. Bruce back to Nixon. Nixon from the point. That one almost fooled Flagler, but it went wide. Chris Brown back to Kyler Nixon. Nine left to go on the power play. Hutchison, in deep, tries to throw it around. He gets it to Bruce, but he can't get a shot off. And there it is. Bruce to Hutchison on the backdoor pass, just as Menard is stepping out of the box. And he puts it past an unsuspecting Flagler. 2-0 now for the Durham Thundercats in this one. We'll see if it goes down as a power play goal. I'm pretty sure Menard was out of the box. It may go down as an even strength goal. Really doesn't matter. 2-0 is what needs to be paid attention to here. It's 2-0 Durham. Face off at center ice. Patton loses a draw. Scored by number 21, Jim Hutchinson. Assist number 23, Quentin Bruce. And number five, Randy Cox. Time of the goal, 15 55. So the second goal goes down as Hutchinson is third of the playoffs from Bruce and Randy Cox at 15 55 of the first period. Not a power play goal, however, it would have been mentioned by Jordan McKinnon. If it was, he didn't say power play goal, so I'm going to count it as an even strength one. Like I said, doesn't matter at the end of the day, it's 2 nothing Durham. Ainsley. Steps across the red line, throws it in deep. Burt out to play it. Fires it around. Kazarian stops it on the boards. Can't do much with it, though. However, it's a log jam there. And it'll come around the net. Van Dyke boarded to the boards by Underwood. Van Dyke gets his stick out and trips Menard, and he's going to get a penalty. We are going to get a Winterhawk power play. Well, there you have it, folks. Great work by Blake Underwood down low to force the, the, the turnover on, uh, in behind the net. Menard picks the puck up, and he, goes, he gets uh, tripped down by Ke uh, Van Dyke, and uh, the Winterhawks will go to the power play here with 327 left to go. That puck is won by Underwood, or Four, by Kazarian. Menard throws it into the netting, and we'll get a stoppage. Time of the penalty. And we need some noise. It is the first Lord Elgin Fish and Chips Winterhawk Power Play. 
Winterhawks on the Lord Elgin's Fish and Chips power play here. And they need a goal bad. Hopkin comes back into the zone and recovers the puck. He'll send it across. Nick Quaid finding Menard. Menard looking across to Kazarian. Kazarian in across the line, has Underwood. And Menard, Menard stops, puts the backhand, it's just wide. Underwood has it now, throws it back to the point to Quaid. Quaid back to Underwood. Underwood puts it in deep to Kazarian, goes to the center, but it's blocked. And uh, it'll be sent down the ice from uh, Quentin Bruce, and the Thundercats will get a change. So will the Winterhawks. Here comes uh, power play unit number two. 110 to go in the power play. 2.33 left to go here in the first period. Here comes McDermott. He sends it all the way around. Trent Hawk looking to get after it. Comes back to the point. Brown can't keep it in, and Winterhawks will have to reset. Chris Brown sends it even deeper, and Lachlan Elder now will reset. 50 seconds to go here in the power play. First of the game for the Winterhawks. Elder flying across the neutral zone and throws it in. Sends it to McDermott. McDermott now looking for a lane. Sends it in deep. Hawk sends it back to Brown. Brown from the point. Stop by Gatlin Burt. Lashes the leather right in front of McDermott. And we'll have a faceoff coming up here to the left of Gatlin Burt. 33 seconds to go in the power play to, for the Winterhawks. 1.59 to go in the first. The score is 2 0 for Durham. Face off won by the Winterhawks. It's back to Hopkins. He shoots. That's off a skate. Underwood will come up with it. The stick is broken. Ben Davis' stick was broken. It's a five on three. There's a shot from Hopkins. That just goes wide. Kazarian comes up with it. Plays it to Menard. Menard's at the point. Sends it into Kazarian. Goes to the front. There's a shot. Menard with the shot. And Gatlin Bird is equal to the task, making the save. And we'll get a face off here. Well, Ben Davis will get a new, uh, a new uh, set of lumber there. His stick was absolutely shattered off of that shot. And uh, like I say, 11 seconds left to go here in the power play. 137 to go here in the first period. Thundercats lead it two to nothing. Kazarian wins the draw. Menard gets in there to control it. Underwood on the sideboards, plays it back to Hopkins. Hopkins shoots from the point. Menard is right on top of Burt, trying to disrupt him any way he can. Good strategy. But uh, ultimately, Burt holds on. And another faceoff will come up here. Two seconds now left in the power play. 128 to go in the first, still 2 0. Kazarian lines up for the draw for the Winterhawks. It's controlled by the Winterhawks. Now back to five on five. Trevor Smith with a shot at it. It's a stick. And Graham will turn the other way. He'll play it ahead to Rigney. Rigney across the blue line, sends it in deep. He goes after Flagler and he hits Flagler and he's gonna get a penalty for it. Unless they're gonna give it to Tatey, but I can't understand why. Who's gonna get the penalty here, I wonder? And it looks like it's gonna go to Colin Rigney of the Durham Thundercats, and we're gonna have a Winterhawks power play. So the Winterhawks here with a minute 12 left in the first period are gonna get a two minute power play, or less, depending on whether or not they score. At least it'll be for 112 anyways. But uh, yeah, we'll have to do this face-off over again here as we have a face-off coming up, 110. Two minutes for goaltender interference. The penalty is for goalie interference. That's a popular one these days. And the Winterhawks will look to capitalize here. The puck is in deep. Miles McLean has it now. He's looking for an outlet, but he gets it past McDermott. Tried to get it back to him at the point, but that was ultimately unsuccessful. And Elder is back to get it in the Winterhawks zone. 50 seconds left to go here in the first period. We're in the final minute. Elder in across the blue line. Puck is set in deep. McLean is the first to get it in behind Burt. Sends it around to Trent Hawk. Hawk trying to figure out what to do with it. Sends it to McLean in front to McDermott. He scores! Brett McDermott! As the Winterhawks on the board here in the first period, a power play goal with 34 left. It's 2-1, Thundercats.
Face off here at center ice. Fuck. So the scoring play is Brent McDermott with his second of the playoffs from Miles McLean and Lachlan Elder. That's at 1926 of the first period. Pulling the Winterhawks to within one. Andy Fraz has it on the board, tries to get it out. Bruce at the point. 11 seconds to go here in the first period. It's in deep. Chris Brown comes up with it, tries to send it in front. Brown thwarts it away, and it's into the neutral zone, and that will pretty much do it for what was a very entertaining first period of hockey here in game number four of the WOAA Senior AA Men's Quarterfinals between the number three Durham Thundercats and the number six Soggy Shores Winterhawks. Two to one is the score for Durham. The, to the shots on goal in the first period were 13 to 12 in favor of Durham. At the end of one, the Win uh, Winterhawks currently trail. It's two to one. Thundercats here in the first intermission. We'll be back in about 15 minutes or so for the start of the second period. Stay tuned. Want to look at the TST out of town schedule. We're following one of nine on the ice in the NHL tonight. The Toronto Maple Leafs currently have a 4 1 lead on the Ottawa Senators as they play currently. Uh, the UA playoffs have two games. Shallow Lake is in the Tavistock and Petrolia is at Lucknow. They're both for 7 30 starts. However, we don't have any updates on them because I'd imagine they uh, do not really like to tweet when it comes to an A playoff uh, opportunity. But that being said, uh, we are going to look at the AA series that are going on right now. Um, all four series are currently underway. Uh, we have a score out of Tilsonburg uh, between the Shelburne Muskies and the Tilsonburg Thunder. It is 4-2 Tilsonburg. Tilsonburg currently leads that series two games to nothing. We have games going on in Clinton between the Radars and the Huron East Centenaires. Clinton currently leads 3-0 in that series. And Ripley Wolves and the Milford and four-wheel drives. Ripley leading that series. Two to one. Our your first period recap on the goal front. We had uh, Brown from Bruce and Nixon at 10:55 on the power play. Hutchison from Bruce and Cox at 15:55 on the power play, and McDermott from McLean and Elder at 19:26 on the power play. We're ready to get underway here. Second period, Winterhawks hockey here at the Plex in Port Elgin. Back to the point. Matheson played it ahead. Quentin Bruce. The puck come off outside of the blue line, brought in by Bruce, and it is whistle for the offside early on here. On the power plays in the first period, Durham went two for two, while the Soggin Shores Winterhawks went one for two. The shots on net for the uh, Durham Thundercats 13, Soggin Shores 12 in the first period. Matheson will play it across to Kyler Nixon. Nixon just barely avoids a check, but he loses the puck. Now the Winterhawks are up with it and they'll play it out into the neutral zone. Matheson has it now for the Thundercats. Skating out to, through the neutral zone, Bruce will tip it in deep. Jacob Brown over to Justin Ainsley. Ainsley through the neutral zone, throws it in. It bounces on Gatlin Burt, but he comes up with it. Makes the glove save, and he'll hold on for the faceoff. A gift certificate for dinner for two from Lord Elgin Fish and Chips. For Brent McDermott's power play goal. Congratulations for that. Massive goal by Brent McDermott at the end of the first period on the power play. Hopefully the Winterhawks can carry that momentum from that goal into the second period here. Time will only tell. Elder playing it in deep. It's all the way back to the point now. Hopkins keeps it in. And Ben Davis will come up with it. Tries to throw it into the neutral zone. It's deflected by Elder. But now Davis has it again. Quaid. We'll come over and pick it up for the Winterhawks. He'll throw it in behind the net. Elder on the sideboards. He's bodied in there 
but he gets it over to Quaid, and Quaid will skate it through the neutral zone. Over center ice, dumps it in deep. McMillan grabs it for Durham. Circles around, and he'll start it out. Come out to the blue line. He'll dump it down. McMillan again at the red line. Ben Davis looking for it. He can't come up with the puck. And here is McDermott in across his own. McDermott gets slashed, and that is a huge hack from Jim Hutchison, and he will go to the box for that hack on Brent McDermott. That'll send the Winterhawks to an early power play here in the second period, 18-29 left to go here in the second, and Hutchison is going to the box. Face off there and the puck comes all the way out. And the Winter Hawks will go back to reset. Jeff McMillan. Two minutes for slashing. Time of the penalty, 131. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's have some noise. It's another Winter Hawks World and Fish and Chips power play. Pardon me, that was McMillan on the slash at 121. And the Winter Hawks are to the Lord Elgin's Fish and Chips power play. And now, now I got my own PA announcer correcting me after I try to correct him. Um, the penalty is actually to Jim Hutchison, number 21. Pardon my, uh, pardon my error on that one. Brian Kazarian has the puck now as the Winterhawks control on this power play. Kazarian skates to the center, tries to get a shot across, and an, and an odd man rush the other way. Randy Cox with Chris Brown. Two on two, Cox with it. He's gonna just try and kill some time and throws it into Chris Brown. Round in behind the net. He's controlling it there, and he goes down in a heap. And the Winter Hawks will start out. McLean tries to throw it into the middle, but that's intercepted. And now here comes the puck the other way. Ben Davis trying to go after Flagler. Can't come up with it. Flagler over to Elder. Elder skates through the neutral zone. Davis on the back check, trying to get it away from Elder. Elder stops up, but his pass is intercepted, and it's sent back into the neutral zone. Trevor Smith with it now. Smith over to Brent McDermott. McDermott circles back. He'll skate ahead. Nice nifty move to get into the zone and throws it over in the net. Trying to get it on the net, but it sails wide. Trent Hawk now with it. Sends it in on Burt, he makes the save. McDermott trying to get it out in front to Elder, but that was intercepted and it was thrown out. And uh, Winterhawks have nine seconds left here on the power play. Couple chances, but nothing doing. McDermott now trying to get one last chance, one last rush. McLean comes up with the puck. He'll circle back, looking for Trevor Smith, but the pass comes in late, and Rigney comes back and makes a great defensive play to break that up, up that opportunity. Connor Patton now throws it over to James McCaig. McCaig's going to skate it in. Body by Rigney. Rigney's got a nice hold on him. Back to Jacob Brown. His shot flutters over the net. Puck's on the sideboards now. McMillan will fire it all the way down the ice, and that'll be icing. We are at the four minute mark of the second period, and we'll have a face off in the Durham zone. Some decent opportunities for the Winterhawks on that power play, but ultimately we're not able to put one past Gatlin Burt. Connor Patton now on the draw in the Thundercats zone. He tries to draw it back, but, is, but he cannot. And the Thundercats will bring it out. Trevor Houston gets bodied by Justin Ainsley, who stands them up. But we are going to get a penalty here, and I believe it's going to be coming to the Winterhawks. By the way. <laughs> the penalties here is going to go to number 97, Alex Koontz. And he's going to get the penalty for tripping. And the winner and the Thundercats, who are two for two on the power play, are going to get yet another opportunity where they've actually absolutely dominated the Winter Hawks on the man advantage in the series. Hutchison throws it back. Tyler Nixon over to Bruce. Bruce shot, and Flagler makes a brilliant save. Mitchell tried to come up with it. It's in a bunch of skates. Bruce at the point now. Sends it down low to, uh, to Randy Cox. Cox throws it on Flagler. He deflects it away. Nixon does a great job keeping it into the point for Durham. Body on the boards and uh, 
Andy Fraz comes up with it and sends it all the way down as the Winterhawks get a much needed change. 120 to go in the, pe in the penalty to Coots. And uh, Kyler Nixon will start away. He sends it up to Chris Brown. Brown wanting to send it back to Nixon who wasn't ready for the pass back. And that's sent all the way down the ice by Underwood. Quinn Bruce back to get it now for Durham. Lachlan Elder on him. He sends it back to Captain Kyler Nixon. Nixon will start away. Send it to Bruce. Bruce in across the zone. Sends it back to Nixon. Nixon to Bruce. Bruce sends it in deep to Houston. It's in the crease, but it comes out unharmed, and Underwood will grab it and send it all the way down the ice onto Burt. Burt will leave it for Derek Matheson. Matheson will look to control it now. 35 to go here in the power play for Durham. In across the line. Terpstra back to Matheson. Matheson hits, put, throws it towards the net, and Graham deflects it on the crease and manages to deflect it all the way out into the netting and out of play. 25 seconds left in the penalty. 14-18 left to go here in the second period. It's a one goal game between the Durham Thundercats and the Soggy Shores Winterhawks. Durham holds the 2-1 advantage. Like I said, 25 seconds left to go in this man advantage for the Thundercats. Their third of the game. They are two for two on the power play thus far as Tatey grabs the puck. He'll send it all the way down and Tom Lachlan will, uh, will control it for the Thundercats and he will start it away past to Justin Graham. He sends it in. Justin Graham now number 18 on the, uh, on the, the pressure as Menard dumps him in behind the net with a big body check. We are back to even strength now as Alex Kutz returns from the box. It's over to Loglin. He sends it into the middle, but that is deflected. And Blake Underwood will turn it around. He gets it to Menard. Menard gets a step. Stopped by Bird. And now Menard is going to get a penalty for goaltender interference for driving in to Gallen Burt. Is it going to be a Menard penalty or is it going to be a, a penalty on Durham? Because it was for a slash. The referee made the motion for a slash, but it looked more like goalie interference. Okay, slashing it is. Menard gets the penalty for slashing. One can only assume that the slash is on Gatlin Burt, which uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I'll roll with it. It's Menard's second penalty of the game, and it sends the Thundercats right back to the power play. Puck is dumped all the way down the ice. Two minutes for slashing. Time on the penalty, 626. 626, the time of that penalty to Menard for slashing. Fraz in across the blue line, sends it in on Gabert. He drops it there, and Chris Brown will control. Brown will turn it around, tries to get uh, a round hawk who puts on the pressure. Kyler Nixon now. Looking for an outlet, finds Quentin Bruce. Bruce sends it over to Randy Cox. Cox in across the blue line. Trying to find an outlet now. Brown throws it over to Kyler Nixon. Back to Chris Brown. Brown throws it in deep. It's in the crease. And where is it? They're saying it's a save. Unbelievable, Jeff Flagler. Oh my goodness. If the Winterhawks happen to come back and win this game, mark that down, Jeff Flagler with possibly the save of the series, and it remains a 2-1 score. 108 left to go here on the power play for Durham. 12.42 to go, it remains 2-1, and they have Jeff Flagler to thank for that. An unbelievable save there. Winterhawks try to control, but it comes to Randy Cox. Cox in the corner, battled by Josh Hopkins. Gets it ahead, gets it away. Jim Hutchinson now throws it around to Chris Brown. Quaid's there, he intercepts the puck. It's in the skates, they're trying to get it loose. Jim Hutchinson will come out with it now. He sends it back to Nixon, but it goes off his skate, but he's able to keep it in. Randy Cox now throws it in the middle. But here it comes to McLean, as Quaid threw it up to him. McLean now will just kill some time from the clock and. Good on him to do so. Wade will now send it all the way down on to Gallenbert. 
26 seconds to go here in the Durham power play. They're fourth of the game. They've scored two power play goals thus far. Kyler Nixon into the corner now. Body by James McKaig. Gotta be careful you don't take a penalty there if you're James McKaig. Graham sends it to Nixon. Nixon looking for Graham, but he gets away from McKaig. Makes a couple of moves. There's Graham, and that is a stick. McQuaid, great stick in front. As he's had quite the battle here with Trevor Houston. And now we're gonna get a penalty, and it's gonna come to number six, Kyler Nixon on the retaliatory, and we got some more fisticuffs. Now what's gonna happen here? As Kyler Nixon came right back at James McKaig and gave him an extra shot. So this will be really interesting now what happens here. And of course, everybody in Durham that's come to the Plex tonight thinks that they're a referee in the game, but uh, you know, there's a lot of conversation going on as uh, Menard is down by Gallenbert and the Thundercats want to break that up, understandably so, as we try and figure out what's, what's going to happen here. Well, there's at least a two minute penalty up on the uh, scoreboard there for Durham, uh, but I'm not sure what more will come of this. Eleven twenty-five to go here in the second period, and a two-minute penalty is on the board, at least for now. We'll wait till we get the official, I suppose. Menard off the draw, throws it wide. So here we go. Here's the official. Okay. So for Kyler Nixon, it's two. Two minutes for high sticking and a 10 minute misconduct. He'll stick in the box for another 138 as the Winterhawks are on the power play. Sponsored by Lord Elgin's Fish and Chips. Nick Quaid has the puck now. Skates in into the slot, but is unable to get a shot away as it hits the stick and goes wide. Josh Hopkins now back at the point. A lot of activity in front. That hits Menard and the puck will come out all the way down the ice. 117 to go here in the power play. Ben Davis intercepts that Flagler outing. And he sends it right back in on Flagler. Lucky he was back in the net to, to stop that one. And Hopkin is gonna get a penalty now for dumping Quentin Bruce in the corner. And that Winterhawk power play stops right there. And we will play four on four hockey for 104. Hopkins gonna get the penalty, it looks like, for high sticking. And uh, like I said, we will play two. Uh, we will play 104, uh, four on four hockey here in the second period, 10.30 to go. 2-1, Durham. Face off in the Winterhawk zone, it's played back to Tom Longland. And we got Brent McDermott now, on the breakaway, he scores! Oh my goodness, Brent McDermott! How do you do? It's two to two. And it will remain four on four for uh, another 57 seconds, at which case the Durham Thundercats will go to the power play. But it is a 2 2 game. Yeah, Brent yeah, McDermott. Goal. His third of the playoffs and second tonight. Score by number 27, Brent McDermott. McDermott's got the puck now. Cross the blue line, finds Miles McLean. He shoots. That's stopped by Burke. On the side of the goal line. And we got his fist that comes down. Burke goes down. An unbelievable series of events in front between Trevor Smith and Gatlin Burke. That was unbelievable. I don't know what's going to come of this. But Trevor Smith was right on top of Gatlin Burt. They started shoving. 
once the puck went the other way and Gatlin Bird ended up falling to the ice like Trevor Smith and Gatlin Bird engaging there but Bird ended up going down but now Trevor Smith's going to go to the box and uh, I guess no penalty to Bert, but a penalty to Trevor Smith. And uh, it looks like here that we might play some four on three. It's, it's certainly possible. Wonder how they're gonna shake this all out, but it does look like we're gonna play some four on three. Okay, so we're going to have a four on three power play for the Durham Thundercats for 29 seconds, in which then it will turn into a five on three as the referee is over at the penalty timekeeper's box trying to figure out what to make of this. His guess is as good as mine at this point. And it looks like we're gonna be good to go here. Randy Cox will take the draw for Durham up against Andy Mitchell. It's Mitchell, Brown, and Ainsley on the four on three. Over, uh, and there's the goal for Randy Cox on the power play, shocking there. It's their third power play goal of the game and that restores the Durham one goal lead. It's three, two. Durham. So that will put us back to four on four for another 18 seconds in which then Durham will go back to the power play. Mitchell wins the draw back to Quaid. Quaid plays it ahead to Mitchell whose puck goes into the Sogging Shores bench and we'll get a stoppage here. 9.37 to go, it's a 3-2 lead for the Dur Durham Thundercats. Assist number 14, Kevin Van Dyke, and number 9, Chris Brown. Time of the goal, 10-17. So that's Cox from Van Dyke and Brown at 10-17, the scoring play. Thundercats on the power play. Here's a play, and they score! Way back! And they answer Andy Mitchell on the dumping, puts it past Gallen Burt, and we are tied at three! Boy, this game just keeps giving me full of surprises, you know what I'm saying? I, it's just remarkable, and, I, and you gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. We're tied at three. 9.28 to go here in the second period. Three seconds left, and the Durham penalty they will go, or excuse me, the uh, yeah, the Durham penalty, and they are now on a five on four power play here. Chris Brown skates it over the center zone, throws it across to Bruce. Bruce, back to Matheson. Bruce throws it deep. There's a shot and they score. It's Chris Brown, and he answers right back. Right, uh, it's it's one after the other here, folks. And uh, Durham's got the lead. 4-3 is the score, thanks to Chris Brown. Mark that as another power play goal as well. That gives the Durham Thundercats four, which is the same amount they had in Durham game number, number one. Number and now we're gonna get a penalty to the Durham Thundercats is Jim Hutchison for sticking Justin Ainsley after Ainsley de delivered a hit, he gave a retaliatory uh, hit back, cross check back to Justin Ainsley and he's gonna get a penalty. It's kinda hard not to call a penalty when it's right, under, right in front of the referee. So the Winterhawks are gonna go to the power play here. Kazarian wins the uh, wins the the wins the face off but now we're going to get another penalty and it's going to go to the Winterhawks and it's going to be Chris Menard
And well, so much for that power play. Menard, Menard trying to go to the net, took a player down with him, and he's gonna get the penalty for interference. Uh, four seconds into the Winterhawks power play, and uh, that is now over, and we're gonna play some four on four. Faceoff's gonna come all the way back in the Winterhawks zone. Four to three is the score. 8.45 left here in the second period. A very entertaining second period, to say the least. It has been nothing short of entertaining, and uh, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Nick Quaid comes up with the puck. Winterhawks zone. He'll skate away with it. Send it up to Brent McDermott. McDermott in across the line. He's got the hot hand tonight. He has two. McDermott comes up with the puck now. Looking to put it on net, but he cannot. And Hopkin does a great job to keep it in deep for Miles McLean. McLean into the corner. He's there with Brent McDermott. McDermott back to McLean. McLean finds Nick Quaid. Quaid finds Josh Hopkin. He sends it in on Burt. He gloves that and he'll hold it for a faceoff. Won't take any chances. And we'll have a faceoff to the left of Gatlin Burt. We got 120 left in the Winterhawk penalty. And one, one, excuse me, 124 left in the Winterhawk penalty. 120 left in the Sogging, or excuse me, the Durham penalty. So there'll be four seconds of a power play once that penalty expires. And up ahead now, Justin Graham throws it in on Flagler. He makes the blocker save and they go to the corner. Patton, they get it all the way around. Trevor Smith, he'll throw it all the way down and Patton will go after it, but this was gonna go for icing. Patton unable to get there ahead of Jeff McMillan, or excuse me, yeah, Jeff McMillan. And now Patton's gonna take a penalty. They're gonna give him a penalty for knocking Gatlin Bird off his feet. And uh, we're gonna get another Durham power play. And he's not happy. Understandably so. But it's a roughing call to Connor Patton. And we're gonna get a Durham power play for, well, at least 55 or 51 seconds. Well, we're gonna get one for 51 seconds, then it's gonna turn into a two on one, or excuse me, a five on three for 50, uh, 51 seconds or four seconds. It's gonna be a five on three for four seconds and then which it'll turn into a five on four. I think I got that right. And there's a lot of talk and conversation going on between the Sugging Shores bench and Gatlin Burt. Makes it for a really interesting hockey. So we got a four on three, Durham on the power play once again. And uh, we got Derek, Derek Matheson has it now. Two minutes for roughing. They're gonna make a change here. Quentin Bruce onto the ice now. Bruce has it. He's with Brown and Matheson. Bruce has it. He's all alone there, takes a shot. That hits Tatey and bounces down. And that'll go all the way down the ice. Winterhawks getting that one out. Mitchell is out there with Greg Tatey and Trevor Smith. Mitchell will come off and Underwood will come on to the board, over the boards. Thundercats across the red line now. We got 10 seconds left to go here before it turns into a five on three. Four seconds of one. Matheson being char uh, challenged by Underwood. Bruce throws it in deep to Cox. Cox plays it back to Matheson. Five on, five on three. Now it's a five on four. Menard back on the ice. Brown, shot, scores! And Menard fills him in, but he's a second too late. And Brown scores. And that'll make it five to three for Durham. And for Chris Brown, that's the hat trick goal on the night. Pretty sure all of them were on the power play as well, if I'm not mistaken. Five to three is the score. 6.40 to go here in the second period. Mitchell, Andy Fraz, and Trent Hawk on the ice for the Winterhawks now. 
Jacob Brown and Justin Ainsley on the points. Deep into the zone, Andy Mitchell takes his man into the boards, comes back to Ainsley. This game is getting very, very interesting and very physical. Bodies are flying everywhere. It's like a wrestling pay-per-view. And we're gonna get a penalty to the Winterhawks. Why not? We'll see who it's gonna go to. The endless parade of players going to the box for the Winterhawks is not doing them any favors. It's just killing them. So who's going to the box? Well, I guess it's, I don't know who they're pointing at here. Like, do they even, do they even know who they're giving the penalty to, I wonder? There's a lot of discussion going on right here. Well, and I guess it'll be, uh, is it, okay, I guess it's gonna be Andy Mitchell going to the box. Not really sure what for, but uh, it's Andy Mitchell who's gonna sit for two or less. Thundercats back to the power play. And Randy Cox will take the draw for Durham against Miles McLean. McLean plays it straight ahead. Wichita it's all the way down the ice. Andy Mitchell, two minutes for charging. Mitchell for charging is the official penalty that sends the Thundercats back to the power play. Chris Brown, who has three on the night, into the Winterhawk zone. Durham comes up with it, however. Matheson's back at the point now. Matheson sends it over to Quentin Bruce. They put a wall in front of the net. Flagler down, tried to cover it, however, couldn't come up with it. Matheson now, back to Bruce. Bruce, looking for a lane. Finds Br uh, Brown on the sideboards. Brown back to Bruce. His shot and his stick is broken. He didn't like that. And the puck will come out in front. Matheson over to Brown. Brown trying to figure out where to go. It's in front of the net to Cox. That's stopped by Flegler. And the puck is gonna go down the ice. It's a high stick. Matheson's gonna touch it. And the whistle will go here. Great play by Flagler to keep that one out. Randy Cox right on top of him and trying to put it past him, but he was equal to the task. Keeps this a two goal lead for the Thundercats. 101 to go in the penalty to Andy Mitchell. 521 to go here in the second period. Longland throws it around. It's Justin Graham throwing it to Justin Graham. Plays it over to Trevor Houston. Houston tried to get it past Tatey, but that didn't work. And Tatey will just backhand it all the way down the ice. 43 seconds to go here in the penalty. Five minutes to go here in the second. All the way down the ice. And he did not, Justin Graham did not reach center ice before he threw that down the ice. And it is an icing call. And it's gonna come back. It's gonna come back into the Durham end. We're gonna get a face off to the left or excuse, excuse me, to the right of Gatlin Burt. It's been a really interesting second period. And, uh, you know, I gotta be honest, folks, I haven't called a game play-by-play -play in nine years. And uh, I'm feeling a little rusty keeping up with this high pace, but I'm trying my best, so bear with me. Uh, Graham now has it for the Thundercats, and he's gonna break out. There 22 seconds left here on the power play. Trevor Smith comes up with it. He'll throw it all the way back down. It's 15 seconds left now on the power play. Longland in behind the net. Trying to find an outlet and he does. Over to Trevor Houston. Houston to Ben Davis, but that goes off his stick and down the ice. Trevor Smith plays it to Greg Tatey. Tatey throws it ahead, but to nobody. And Longland has it all the way down at his end. Throws it ahead. And Terpstra will fire it ahead to Jim Hutchinson. That one takes a deflection and Flagler has to come out and sprawl and stop it. He'll hold it for a faceoff. We are down to 4.09 to go here in the very entertaining second period. And it's 5-3 for Durham. I'll do my best to wrap up everything or recap everything that happened in what is and what has been 
a very crazy and entertaining second period right before the third period comes back to air, so stay tuned for that. Kazarian against Cox in the faceoff circle. Brown, quick shot off the draw, and Flagler had to be very athletic to stop that one from Chris Brown, but he's equal to the task. Ainsley in behind the net now. He'll try and come out, gets around Quinton Bruce, sends it to the line. It's back on into the corner now, and Bruce has it. He's bodied by Jacob Brown. Bruce sends it to the point to McMillan. McMillan fires it towards the net. It's deflected off of Chris Brown and into the corner. Bruce has it now. Bruce is bodied by Jacob Brown. Incoming to get it is Brian Kazarian, trying to figure out who to play it to, but Menard has to come up with it. That pass is back to Jacob Brown, and he'll try to find an outlet now. Menard stymied at the red line, and it's Underwood now in their own end. Trying to find a way to get up the ice here, but having difficulties are the Winterhawks. Schwint plays it ahead. It's intercepted by Miles McLean, yet Menard is offside, and they can't advance any further. McMillan sends it ahead. It's past Ainsley and all the way down the ice, and Hopkins has to come back for it. Ainsley will look now to the side, and McDermott has it. He's going to come in across the blue line and, and find, he finds Elder, who shoots, and what a save by Gatlin Burt. That one almost got past him, but Burt was able to find it and smother it in the glove hand. And we'll have a faceoff come up here to the right of Gatlin Burt. 2.54 to go here in the second period, 5-3 Durham. McLean's line stays out there with uh, Brent McDermott and Lo uh, Lachlan Elder. They are with uh, Nick Quaid and Josh Hopkin. Winterhawks win the draw but can't control and it's ahead to Bill Terpstra. Terpstra throws it ahead but Hopkin has it now and he's gonna circle and go for a skate but it gets caught and Quaid skate and they got a chance the other way. Hutchison now looking for Ben Davis but can't find him and the Winterhawks turn the other way. Here comes McDermott. McDermott in across the blue line. Stop, stop, trying to find someone to pass it to, but he'll throw it in deep. Lachlan Elder in behind the net now. He'll circle around, looking for someone to find it, pass it to. M M McDermott going to the net hard, trying to find a lane. Elder still has it. That pass is intercepted, but it's gonna come out. Jim Hutchison makes a great play to get it out. And Hopkins now will control and throw it in deep. 2.07 to go here in the second period. 5-3 Durham is the score. And it goes all the way down the ice, and this one's going to be an icing. Gives me a chance to catch my breath. Not that there's anything wrong with that. 1.59 to go. It's been a crazy, crazy second period. We've had goals from McDermott and Andy Mitchell for the Winterhawks, Randy Cox, and two from Chris Brown for the Thundercats. In behind the net now, Andy Mitchell looking to get after, and he comes up with the puck. Steals it, gets it to Andy Fraz. Fraz in behind the net to Hawk. He can't get ahead of, it, of uh, McMillan. McMillan comes up with it now and he'll just play it all the way out. And this may go for icing once again, which it will. 140 to go here in the second period. Faceoff will do it all again in the Thundercats zone. Winterhawks trying to get something going and trying to get back into this game. They are down by two and uh, they're gonna need uh, goals of plenty in this uh, what appears to be potential shootout between the Winterhawks and the Thundercats. Andy Mitchell on the draw, he has Fraz and Hawk, Tatey and Trevor Smith on the blue line, and we're gonna, th and the referee is gonna throw both the both Hawk and Van Dyke, or excuse me, that's Mike Schwint. They were uh, jostling off the face off, trying to gain position, and the ref said enough of that, I'll send both of you. Uh, offsetting penalties, or you know, match or excuse me, they, they both get called for the same thing, and we're gonna play some uh, five on five. Coincidental minors, that's what I was looking for. And uh, we continue play on. Uh, Randy Cox lets it go past him, it gets into the neutral zone, and James McKaig has it now. 126 to go here in the second period, 5 3 Durham. Greg Tatey. Puts it ahead to Trevor Smith. It goes off his stick, and here comes Jim Hutchison. Tatey now has it, and McKaig is going to skate it out. He's going to throw it all the way across, and Alex Kuntz goes after it. Kuntz bodied into the boards from McMillan. Good body check there. 
Comes across and around to James McKaig. He has it on the board, throws it down low to Coots. Comes out to all the way to Randy Cox at the blue line as we are into the final minute of the second period. Cox trying to get around Tatey, but he does a great job keeping him to the outside. And Tatey comes up with it. He'll play it ahead eventually as he tries to get it to Connor Patton, but cannot as Longland steps in front of that and puts it in on Flagler. Flagler trying to keep her going here, throws it up to Coots, who throws it in deep. 30 seconds to go here in the second period. 5-3 Durham is the score. Longland tries to make a pass, but it skips over his stick. Houston puts it up and over the blue line, and it's into the neutral zone. Justin Ainsley, he'll skate across center ice and skate it in. Puts the puck in on Burt, and Burt will stop it and hold on. We got 13.8 seconds left in the second. Two medals of the Olympics. Both come in men's slope style snowboarding. Mark Kikoris has won the bronze medal and Max Parrott has won the silver medal. Yeah, very exciting news. The uh, Pyeongchang Olympics, the Canada captured their first two medals of the uh, Winter Olympics. Very, uh, very impressive right there. Uh, we are down to the final five seconds here as Flagler has it in behind his net. He'll play it to Quaid and that will do it for the second period, 5-3. Durham is the score. And if the first two periods have been any indication, for those of you watching at home and for these people here, the third period is going to be very, very entertaining. You do not want to miss it. Stick around. We'll be back in about 15 minutes or so for the conclusion of this one, the third period coming up. Stick around. 5-3 Durham is the score. Okay, folks, welcome back. We are uh, just about ready to get underway here in the third period in the at the Plex in Port Elgin. Andrew Rogers with you doing play-by-play -play tonight in uh, relief of Jordan McKinnon, who's handing the PA duties this evening. I uh, want to get you caught up on what happened in the second period. Uh, the shots were 10-7 to in favor of Durham. They lead the shot department 23-19 to uh, in the total uh, overall game so far. Uh, scoring uh, summary in the second period, first it was Brent McDermott scoring his uh, third, uh, his second of the night. And then we had Randy Cox on the power play for Durham from Van Dyke and Brown. That made it a, uh, I believe it would have been a 3-2 uh, game at that point. Andy Mitchell then came back and tied it. Uh, it was assisted by Greg Tatey and Andy Fraz. And then a pair of goals from Chris Brown, his second and third of the night. His first that was assisted by Hutchison and Cox on the power play. And then his third was assisted by Cox and Matheson on the power play. Five power play goals, an unheard of amount in one game. Uh, but apparently Durham, it can happen to them. It's happened once already in the series where they got four. But uh, they have five. All five of the goals they've scored are power play goals in the game. And uh, they lead the Saugan Shores Winterhawks. Uh, five to three. So we're going to get a little delay here at the beginning of the third period. The pegs are uh, not correctly in place behind Gatlin Burt. Not the first time that's happened this series. Checking the TST out of town schedule. Last check, there was five three Toronto Maple Leafs over the Ottawa Senators, and one of nine on the ice in the NHL tonight. We have a final from the A playoffs. The Lucknow Lancers defeating the Petrolia Squires six to two in Game One of that series. Other scores we could tell you about. Clinton leads the Huron East Centenaires 5-0 in the first period. They lead that series 3-0. We don't have a score from Ripley and Milverton. And Tilsonberg defeated the Shelburne Muskies 7-2 earlier on. They lead that series now three games to nothing as we are ready to go here in the third period. Winterhawks, Thundercats. Puck is deep into the Winterhawks zone. Randy Cox throws it to Chris Brown. Goes towards the net but can't get the pass back. The puck comes in on Flagler. He makes a save there. The puck is loose. McLean comes up with it. 
We're five on five here. In case it looks like the ice is tilted in favor of Durham, it's not, it's five on five. Puck comes up the zone now. In comes Rigney. Rigney trying to break away, but a good play by McLean to break that up, and Hopkins turns it the other way. Hopkins Elder. Elder shoots it in, and they're going to go off on a change, complete change for the Winter Hawks. Graham skates it ahead, tried to find Rigney, but it went past him, and Trevor Smith has it now. Smith in around the net. He starts to come out, wants to find somebody, tries to get to Menard but it's into his skates and it's past him. I don't think he was suspecting the pass when it came. And all the way down the ice for icing it goes. We have a clean slate. We're essentially starting here with a clean, a clean sheet of ice. We're a minute in and there's nobody in the penalty box. How about that? Uh, yes, and uh, well, it appears here, we're trying to figure out who is on the ice, I believe. Seems like a lot of discussion happens between the officials and uh, the players during these games. It's uh, quite impressive. Winterhawks win the, win the draw and Greg Tatey throws it around to Blake Underwood. He'll skate it across center and dump it in. Off to get it is Chris Menard. He's coming in hot on Kyler Nixon. Tries to stop it around the boards but can't. Trevor Smith from the point throws it in and Burke comes up with it but it's loose and Graham will come up with it. He sends it ahead but it's stopped by Trevor Smith. Bird, of course, does not have his goal stick once again. But Menard will come up with it. Kazarian sends it in front to Underwood, and what a save from Gatlin Burt. Unbelievable save. No goal stick. Underwood had him at his mercy, but Burt makes the save to keep it a two goal game for Durham. Underwood, I don't know how you don't score there, but. Gatlin Bird, as he's been all season, is very solid in the Durham net. He is very, very good, as is their defense in Durham. But uh, that aside, he keeps it out. Still a two-goal game. McMillan comes up with the puck for Durham. Sends it ahead to Hutchinson. It hits his skate, and it's back the other way. McKeg tried to come up with it, but could not. And it'll be circled back now. Puck is all the way back to number 13, Mike Schwint of the Durham Thundercats. That's a fun name to say. Looking for an outlet now, trying to figure out who he wants to pass the puck to. That's his defensive partner, Jeff McMillan, number two. It's all the way up to Hutchison, who tips it in on Flagler, and he's forced to stop it and hold on for the faceoff in the Winterhawks zone. 17-49, left to go here in the third period. Five to three for Durham. What's on the line here in the third period? Well, it's pretty simple. Winterhawks don't win tonight. They are done. Their season's over. It's bookended. But if they score two, send it to overtime, or possibly three in the third period, there will be a game five tomorrow in Durham at 1.30. It's into the zone as Mitchell takes uh, charge. He gets boarded by Dean Nixon, and the Thundercats come up with the puck. It's uh, Trevor Houston the other way. He gets in, takes a shot low on Flagler, makes a good pad save, and it's back at end to end hockey right now. Andy Mitchell trying to get around Longland, but could not. Comes back to Fraz. He sends it on Burt. He makes the save. And now it's coming, it's back out, and away goes the Thundercats. Houston in across the zone, throws it in on Flagler. Big blocker save. Flagler forced to be rather athletic to come up with the rebound that went off of Tatey or excuse me, uh, Fraz, but he come up with it, and it's still 5-3. McDermott throws it in on Burt, flashes the leather and says, out of my house. 5-3 remains the score as we get a stoppage here. 16.55 to go in the third period. 5-3, Durham is the score. McLean out with Elder and McDermott up against Cox, uh, Chris Brown, and Quentin Bruce. Pucks all the way up in the air and down the ice. Bruce before center ice when he shot that puck in and it's another icing call in the game. And the faceoff will come all the way back in the Durham zone and it will be a faceoff there. Quite a game for Chris Brown tonight. He has a hat trick in the game and he's been absolutely unbelievable. Pretty sure all three goals he scored is from the exact same spot. 
on the power play, the five power play goals for the Durham Thundercats tonight. Quinn Bruce dumps it in deep past Greg Tatey. Trevor Smith in behind the net now. He gets bodied by Bruce, but he still controls the puck. Sends it ahead to McDermott. McDermott now looking for an outlet. He'll send it in deep. McLean will go after it. He'll come up with the puck. Send it in around the boards, and McDermott tried to stop it, but could not. And Trevor Smith does a rather good job of keeping the puck in, but it's to no avail, and this will be whistled down on a hand pass. And apparently that's worth arguing. I, I don't understand that. It was clear as day that he hit it ahead with his hand, and he was arguing that he didn't. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, faceoff's going to come just outside of the Durham zone here. And they're actually going to move it all the way down. They're going to say that he forcibly, like he knew that it was an intentional uh, delay and a whistle. So uh, they're going to have the face off here in the Durham zone. Ainsley fires it on net. That takes a bounce. As you got Underwood, Kazarian, and Menard. Menard battling in front with Justin Graham. That's quite a battle in front there. But to no avail. And it's into the Winterhawk zone as Rigney takes uh, chase. Ainsley throws it up on the boards to Menard. Menard can't come up with it, however. The puck is there beside Jeff Flagler. Jacob Brown finds it, tries to get away from Rigney and does. Ainsley into the neutral zone and he'll throw it in deep. Winter Ox will give chase now, Kazarian trying to come up with the puck. He gets it ahead to Underwood. Underwood looking in front, but the pass is not there. And uh, Bill Terpstra will go the other way. His shot is deflected away by Flagler, though. Good blocker save there. Hutchison all alone now. He'll come out in front. Tries to get a shot off, but cannot. It's all the way back to the point now to Longland. Longland tried to throw in it around, and Davis comes up with it. Ben Davis trying to get a shot on. He does. Flagler makes the save. It sat there for a moment, but now it is out. And James McCaig tries to get it out and does. Hopkin has it now. Throws it to Patton. Patton dumps it in deep, and they'll give chase. Alex Kuntz into the corner against Longland. Patton joins him, but he cannot come up with it. 14.52 left to go here in the third period. Durham still leads, five to three. Kuntz trying to force it, but cannot. McCaig with the hit on Longland, but it doesn't matter. Van Dyke throws it in deep. Here comes Quentin Bruce. Can't stop the puck and it's out. And Randy Cox throws it back to Matheson who throws it over to Nixon. 14.31 to go, five three Durham. It's tipped in deep and Cox will give chase. Flagler plays it around the net to uh, Josh Hopkin. Bruce beats him there. Tries to cycle it in deep, but it's blocked. Bruce clearly has a hold of Hopkins' stick. He's trying to hold him up there as the play goes the other way and Burt right, is forced okay, to hold on for a faceoff. As we still have quite a battle there between Josh Hopkin and Quentin Bruce. Neither one of them wanting to give an inch. But as the play went back up the ice, Burt was forced to hold on for the faceoff. Mitchell on the faceoff, spins and fires, and it goes wide. Gallen Burt not forced to make the save there as it went wide. And it's on the boards now, on the glass. Tatey keeps it in, does a nice job there. Tatey does another nice job. He bats it out of midair to keep it in this time. But it's out and into the Winterhawk zone as Hutchison throws it in deep. Terpstra, body to the boards by Tatey. And it comes out now, and here comes Andy Mitchell. Mitchell in across the line, throws it on Burt. He makes the save, and then to the net hard is Andy Fraz, and Burt goes down once again. Aggressive play by Andy Fraz to go hard to the net. Took taking the defender in with him, and Burt goes down. But there'll be a whistle here, and we'll have a face-off in the Durham zone to the left of Gatlin Burt. 13.39s to go here in the third period. It's 5-3. to three. A little bit of a slower pace here to start the third period than what was a very raucous second. Faceoff coming up here, Miles McLean will take it against Ben Davis. Davis wins the draw, comes all the way around to Jim Hutchison. Hutchison lets it go and it goes all the way down the ice. 
Flagler will stop it there. Jeff uh, Jacob Brown starts out for the Winterhawks. Skates it across center ice and keeps going now. Throws it in deep, but Kyler Nixon comes up with it. He tries to find a man, but cannot. It's into the neutral zone in Ainsley. Sports that opportunity and sends it all the way back down. Matheson for the Thundercats, forced to turn back. Gets it to Kyler Nixon, who dangerously dangles it in front of his own net. McLean takes him down, no penalty on the play. And it'll go to the line. Hopkins keeps it in, sends it back in deep. Matheson in behind the net. Gets it high on the grass, glass, it's to the point. Hopkin lets a floater go, a knuckle puck, if you will, but it doesn't do any good. And out it comes, Elder off the bench, or to the bench, can't touch it, as uh, Quaid is forced to come back and uh, start it out for the Winterhawks. He'll look to the side and find Menard. Menard does a nice job to get it around the defender, and here comes Kazarian. Oh, he had Blake Underwood, but a nice stick play for, uh, canceled out that opportunity, Menard. Plays it to Kazarian. Kazarian tried to make a move, but it's a force that two on one the other way. Here's Tremble. Oh, he tried to go to the net and bang it home, but could not. As Hopkins takes Tremble and the play continues. No, it, it, rightfully so, no, no calls. And the play comes out to Menard in front, but he's unable to bang it home. Here's Dean Nixon. Nixon now gets the stick slashed out of his hand by Underwood, and he's going to get a penalty for that. He's going to get called for that one. That's pretty blatant. When you slash the guy's stick out of his hand while he's stick handling, it's usually a slash. And uh, unfortunately for the Winterhawks, the Thundercats are going to go back to the power play. Eight eleven, the time of that penalty to Blake Underwood for slashing, and the Thundercats are back to their. Well, I don't know how many power plays they've had this game. To be honest, they've had so many, but they've scored all five on the power play. There's a shot that takes a weird deflection and goes over Jeff Flagler. Crimp Bruce back to Nixon. He fires and it's blocked by Andy Mitchell, who's trying to get a step but cannot. But he has the puck now. Going to try and kill some time here. Thundercats on the power play for another 123. Trevor Smith back to Tatey. Tatey's going to fire it all the way down the ice, and it's into the glove of Gallen Bird. He's going to play it. Leaves it for Kyler Nixon. Nixon, the Durham captain, takes it away. Brings it in across the line and sends it to Chris Brown, who sends it in. Trevor Smith first there. Tries to get it past Bruce, and he blocks it. So he's forced to go the other way, and it's off the glass and out. And ahead goes James McCaig. He's in trying to get up off of Burt, but cannot. On the boards now is Jim Hutchison. McKeg hits him. James McKeg, a beauty job on the penalty kill here for the Winterhawks. 45 seconds left in the Durham power play. Van Dyke in behind the net for the Winter or for the Thundercats. Excuse me, he'll come out. Sends a pass over to Matheson, who skates ahead. Turns back, trying to get set now on this Thundercats power play. McKeg watching him closely. Looking for a play as the crowd forms in front. It's over to Terpstra. Terpstra, in around Hawk. He puts the shot in and it's deflected wide. Matheson now on the sideboards, gets it back to Van Dyke. Van Dyke back to Matheson. Matheson down low. Graham tries to put it in front and try to put it on Flagler, and he did, but Flagler made the save. Penalty almost over now. Four seconds left to go. Durham still controlling. Out of the box is Underwood. There's the shot. Flagler makes the save with the blocker. Massive save for Jeff Flagler. Pucks in front. And he just gets it away, and it's cleared out to the line. Back in front now. Ainsley. They got to get They got to get it down. Winterhawks here. Ainsley will find it and send it ahead to McDermott. McDermott will find it at the center line and take control. It's going to be a nice, though, as he did not even reach the center line before he shot it in. And this is an icing for the Winterhawks, and there'll be a face-off in the Winterhawks zone. And that'll be to the left of Jeff Flagler. We're halfway through the third period, 9.22 to go here in the third. It's still 5-3 for Durham. 
Cox against McLean on the draw. He wins the draw, gets it back to Schwint. Schwint throws it in deep. It gets to Josh Hopkins in behind the net. Hopkins throws it up off the glass and McMillan, it bounces off of his stick. In deep, McMillan throws it around the boards. Hopkins trying to keep it in, but cannot as Quentin Bruce beats him to it. Cox will now fire it in deep and Quaid will turn it around. Throws it up to Elder, tips it deep. Elder gives chase. Goes after uh, Mike Schwint. The puck comes off the glass and it'll go out and all the way down the ice as Nick Quaid is forced back. Quaid, up, up the boards now, he finds McDermott. McDermott steps in across the blue line, tries to put it to the center but cannot as Menard comes up with it. Menard throws it in front, McDermott comes up with it. There's the play of the score! Ryan Kazarian scores! And we have a one goal game, it's five to four, Durham! A real tic-tac-toe play there, ends up on the stick of Brian Kazarian, and right in the back of the net, the Winterhawks are within one. Winterhawks goal, his turn of the playoffs. Scored by number nine, Brian Kazarian! Assist to number 27, Brent McDermott. And to number 41, Chris Menard. <laughs> so McDermott and Menard get assists on the goal that make that 11-33, and it's a one-goal game. Durham has the 5-4 advantage. 7.48 to go here in the third. Puck is out, and Underwood has it. He's trying to be joined by Menard, who gets a step. Oh, and the pass almost reached Menard. He would have been clearing alone on Gatlin Burt, but it, was on, it went over his stick. And we have a 5-4 game still. Menard takes a spill, trying to get back to the bench. But it's in deep now as Justin Ainsley takes control. He'll play it around to Jacob Brown. Brown looking for a man. Finds Brent Mc, or excuse me, Alex Coots in across the blue line. He'll throw it in on Burt. It's loose! Oh, and James McKay got a glorious chance, but his stick was uh, lifted. And it uh, remains a one goal game. Back the other way now. Tremble is absolutely locked by Justin Ainsley. Oh my goodness. That actually looks like a double D on. Unbelievable. What a hit. And it's a 5 4 game still. We move on. Press on. What a hit, though. Boy, I haven't seen a hit like that in a long time. Alex, Alex Kutz comes in, circles in, plays it in, but it's on the late offside. Nick Quaid. Knocks it down at the blue line, he still has the puck. Tries to play it ahead, but Cox intercepts. Cox trying to get it across to uh, Chris Brown, and does. Brown puts it in deep, and Mitchell will go after it. Mitchell, in behind the net now, he'll center it back to Josh Hopkins, who'll reset. Hopkins, trying to find a man to play it up to. Throws it ahead in the center, and it's tipped in by Trent Hawk. Or not. We would like to say congratulations. I thought Hawk tipped it in, but I guess not. Uh, we're going to have a face-off then, I guess, at, uh, to the uh, right, or to the, yeah, to the right of Jeff Flagler in the Winterhawks zone. Time is of the essence. It's uh, 6.13 to go here in the third period. The score is 5-4 to four for Durham. Mitchell Fraz and Andy, or excuse me, Mitchell Fraz and Trent Hawk on the ice for the Thundercats as Trevor Smith comes away with it. Puts it up to Fraz. Fraz sends it in deep. They go after it now. It's all the way around to the other corner. Trent Hawk puts his man in the boards. It's up the boards. Trevor Smith does a good job keeping it in. And it's into the netting. And this will be a faceoff in the Durham zone. 5.54 to go here in the third period. Brian Kazarian with the goal that's got us at a 5-4 score now. And a huge goal it is should the Winter Hawks come back in this one. They're going to need all the, like, to throw all the arsenal they can here as they put out Rockland Elder, Miles McLean, and Brent McDermott trying to get the equalizer. That one unfortunately hops over Trevor Smith and he'll have to go back. He'll send it over to Greg Tatey. Tatey back to Trevor Smith. Throws it up to Rockland Elder. Elder in across the line to McLean. McLean hits the side of the net. Unbelievable chance for McLean. He put it in on. A, he, he shot it through McMillan, and it was off the side of the net, and it stayed out. McLean comes up with it again. 
Toe drag, oh, off the mask of Burt. Unbelievable chance there too. But McLean can't bury. 5-4, still Durham. They still control. Tady in around the net to McDermott. McDermott, wrap around, where is it? And Bird has it. Bird has it, and he'll hold on for a faceoff. Tremendous pressure from the Winterhawks trying to get the equalizer. 5-11 to go here in the third period. 5-4 Thundercats. Hockey program number is 111-111. If you have either of those programs, head on down. By the way, if you're not watching, you should be. If you are watching, tell your friends. Get them watching on YouTube, too, because this is going to be awesome. Up ahead, Quentin Bruce, number 23 for the Thundercats in on the Winterhawks. Circles back. Trying to find a lane, but Brown takes that away. Big body check to the big guy, Quentin Bruce. Up to Menard. Menard, one on two. Throws it in on Burt. I think he wanted to hit him in the mask with that one, but Burt put his glove in front of it and made the save. It'll be a faceoff coming up here in the Thundercats zone. 4.47 to go here in the third period. Still 5-4, Durham. Winterhawks now have uh, Kazarian. He's the centered of uh, centering Chris Menard and Blake Underwood as they get opposed from Ben Davis, Randy Cox, and Quentin Bruce, or excuse me, Jim Hutchinson, I apologize. Mike Schwint. Throws it around, it's off a of body and down the ice, no icing. We're into the fourth, we're 4.37 to go here in the third period. Still one goal game for Durham. Jacob Brown throws it over to Ainsley. Ainsley ahead. Hutchison tried to fill him in but could not. Underwood comes up with the puck deep. Trying to make a move but cannot. He gets the puck taken away from him and Hutchison will start ahead. Hutchison gets it in deep and will go after it. Lagler. Throws it up off the glasses. Quaid goes after it. He's opposed there by Ben Davis. Davis trying to get it from him. And he throws it in the corner and Van Dy or excuse me, Bill Terpstra will come up with it. Terpstra throws it in deep to Ainsley. And Ainsley will throw it all the way down the ice. No icing on this one. Van Dyke back to get it for Durham. 3.53 to go. Time is a killer for the Winterhawks here in the third period. Wagler is going to play it out to Nick Quaid, Quaid throws it ahead, hoping to get it to Fraz, but it's intercepted by Graham, and he just throws it right back in. I have a feeling that's what Durham's gonna do for the remainder of this game, throw it in deep and hope the Winterhawks can get through their defensive arsenal. Hopkin throws it across to Quaid. Quaid puts it up ahead to Mitchell. Mitchell almost got around Nixon, but put himself offside. 3.21 to go. Here in the third period, 5-4, Durham with the lead. What's on the line here? Durham wins, they advance to the second round of the playoffs. A loss for the Winterhawks, they are out. A win, we play tomorrow, 1.30 in Durham. For the Winterhawks, that is. In across the line is Cox. He gets that thwarted away and ahead it, it's ahead to Underwood or McDermott. McDermott has it knocked off his stick and it's the other way. Quinn Bruce tried to get it over to Cox, but McLean broke that up. Shot his, uh, hits uh, Flagler's glove and goes into the corner. Trevor Smith down low, gets it ahead. Quaid puts it up to Elder. Elder puts it to McDermott. Mc McDermott across the red line. That's pushed away by Ben Davis. Davis. Good job, he comes up with it. Tries to get it in deep and in the, in the onslaught continues. Durham pressing the Winterhawks in their own zone, not letting them generate any offense. As McMillan drives it in deep, 2.26 to go here in the third period. Jacob Brown comes ahead for the Winterhawks. He'll get across center and dump it in. Menard, first on it, shot off the side of the net. McMillan throws it around. It's there to Houston, but he can't get it out. Mc, uh, Underwood, back to Kazarian, he shoots. What a save, Burt. That's a huge save with two minutes left here in the third period. Underwood gets it to Smith, who puts it back to Underwood. And it's a, but to the point, Kazarian's got it. Tries to throw it in deep and does. Uh, Menard around the net. Underwood to Kazarian, shot, scores! Yeah. 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 Y
as in. And we have a tie game. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh my goodness, man, I can't take this. I'm 30 years old and I can't have a stroke, I swear to God. And we have a 5-5 five, five game. Uh, I don't know if I can handle overtime. <laughs> 1.45 to go here in the third period, and we have a 5-5 five, five game. Unbelievable. Winter Hawk School is fourth of the playoffs and second tonight. It's offside. Score Quinn Bruce accepts the pass and he is offside. Well, well, well. We are in for a dandy finish. And at number 20, Blake Underwood. Time of the goal, 1850. Unbelievable. Face off out, out, outside the Durham zone here, 134 left to go here in the third period. If it stays this way, we head to overtime. Gallenbert makes the glove save off Trent Hawk and he'll hold it for a face off to the left of Gallenbert. We are in for an unbelievable finish. Like I said earlier, if you're watching, get other people watching right now. They don't want to miss the conclusion of this one. 127 to go, 5-5 five, five is the score. I just want to say right now, thank you Jordan McKinnon for allowing me to step in for you for this instant classic. Menard, or excuse me, yes, plays it back, it's loose. Braz almost had a chance at it, but it was unable to come up with it. Other way, Terpstra, just wide. Hutchinson takes the spill as he gets tangled up with Nick Quaid. Back the other way, Hawk. Throws it towards the net and Burt gloves that one and holds it for a face off. And we'll have another draw to the left of Gallen Burt. 108 to go here in the third period. Winterhawks throw out their top line. Miles McLean, Brent McDermott, Lachlan Elder. Greg Tatey and Trevor Smith on the black on the back end. It's around the net. Elder comes up with the puck. He's looking for an outlet. Throws it in deep to McDermott. We are into the final minute here in the third period. McDermott shot and it's wide of the net. Around the boards to Trevor Smith. Smith at the blue line. Throws it in deep. McDermott comes up with it to McLean. He shoots. It's loose. Where is it? And they got it in the crease somewhere. Burt's got his glove on it, it looks like and he'll hold it for a face-off. 44 seconds to go here in the third. <laughs> 44 seconds left to go. We got a face-off to the right of Gallenbert. Kazarian on the ice with Menard and Blake Underwood. The puck is up and over Trevor Smith and he goes back for it. Smith and Tatey. Trying to get to it, but Quinn Bruce is there. Bruce leaves it for Cox. Back in front, and it's a great play by Kazarian to break that up. 28 seconds to go here in the third period. Puck is in behind the net. Bruce has it for Durham. Throws it back, and it's out. 20 seconds to go. 15 seconds left. Burt plays it all the way up, and it's tipped all the way down the ice, and on to Flagler. 10 seconds to go. This one is... Probably going to head to overtime by the looks of it here. We are going to get an overtime in this series as the Durham Thundercats and the Soggy and Shores Winterhawks are tied 5-5. Five, five. Unbelievable. I can't say that enough, can I? And you know what? Thank goodness that the, that the Zamboni is coming out to clear the ice because I need a break. We will be back in about 10 minutes or so. For the conclusion of this one, we go to sudden death overtime, 5-5. Five, five. Durham leads 3-0. Winterhawks trying to stay alive. Stick around.
Welcome back, folks. It's uh, Soggin Shores Winterhawks Hockey on YouTube. Andrew Rogers here with you, uh, filling in for Jordan McKinnon on this night. And uh, I got to say, I'm really happy I'm here. I'm really happy I'm filling in for this, uh, what has become an instant classic here. Uh, we're just about to get underway here in this overtime frame. It's a sudden death. First one to score wins in the third period. It was two goals from Brian Kazarian, his third and fourth of the playoffs that put the Winterhawks into this position to keep on playing. They trail the series three to nothing. Next goal wins. Two scenarios will play out here. If the Winterhawks score, we have game five tomorrow in Durham. Uh, it's a 1.30 start on, in Durham for game five. And if the Durham Thundercats score, well, then you can bookend this series. Stick a fork in them, because they'd be done. But uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just sit back and enjoy this overtime period. Jacob Brown on the fresh slated clean of ice. Sends it over to Justin Ainsley. He fires it in and Mitchell goes after it. Trying to get to the puck. Cannot come up with it. And he's gonna get a penalty. Of course he's gonna get a penalty. He's gonna get a penalty for slashing the stick out of, his, out of the Durham player's hands. And well, let's see, 17 seconds in and the Durham Thundercats are going to get yet another power play with a chance to win the series. So Andy Mitchell gets a penalty for slashing. And the Winterhawks are on the penalty kill. Durham on the power play with a chance to win it. Puck comes around to Quentin Bruce on the sideboards, plays it towards the center. That's deflected up and over Jeff Flagler. It stays out. Pucks to the point. Kyler Nixon down low to Bruce. Bruce on the half boards. Nick Quay or Josh Hopkins looking at him. Randy Cox has it now. He puts it towards the net and Flagler has it. He's gonna hold on for the faceoff. 126 to go in the penalty to Andy Mitchell. This is a massive, massive kill for the Winter Hawks this early into the overtime frame. We're at 19.09, let's go here in the overtime. Of course, it's first team that scores Durham will end up winning this one. Durham calls a 30 second timeout. Gives us a chance to catch our breath too, so thanks Durham. I can honestly tell you, I don't know how many Durham power plays they, that they have had in this game, but they have scored all five of their goals on the power play. Something I can honestly say from a sports enthusiast view, I honestly can say I've never seen that in a game before. Uh, we have an update here. The Ripley Wolves win 6-4 today, uh, excuse me, tonight against the Milverton four-wheel drives. They have a 3-1 lead in that series now. Uh, other scores had the Clinton Radars up 10-4 uh, in the third period. And uh, they look to uh, close that series out, it would appear. And uh, also, NHL update for you, Toronto Maple Leafs defeating the Ottawa Senators. 6-3 was the final in that one. Durham controls in the Winterhawk zone. They get it back to Kyler Nixon at the point. He plays it in deep for Quentin Bruce leaves it for Randy Cox. Quaid and Hutchinson battling in front. Bruce has the puck. Tries to play it to Cox down low. He has it. Gets it back to Bruce on the half boards. He's going to try and find somebody, if not shoot it himself. He gets it to Cox. Cox tries to play it in front, and that's boarded away. Bruce shoots it. Flagler makes the save. This puck needs to get out. And Underwood will make sure that happens as he plays it over to Elder. Elder will shoot it in deep. And, and Hopkin will go after it for some unknown reason. He's a defenseman. Get back. <laughs> in ahead comes Kyler Nixon in across the blue line. Stick handling his way, but Elder picks that off and he throws it down the ice. 30 seconds left in the penalty to Andy Mitchell. This is a, would be a massive kill. And there's a shot. Oh my goodness. Andy Fraz almost ended it with a deflection off the Hawk shot. But it was the stop by Gallenbert. And this one's going to go all the way back down the ice. And, he, and here it's out comes Burt. Tries to play it out. But he plays it back to Trevor Houston smartly. 
and the puck will come up. Trent Hawk, he uh, steals the puck, makes a move, and throws it in deep. Here comes Chris Menard, he's got it now. He's pinned up against the boards, and the, the Durham Thundercats will take over. Matheson skates it ahead. Hawk tried to take him out, but could not. Here's Justin Graham in the corner. Body by Kazarian. Graham and Kazarian going after it. Also Graham and Tatey going after it, which is weird enough. Graham on the ball, on the puck, plays it in behind the Graham and behind the net. Number 18, Tatey with the stick around his waist. Lucky no call there. Trevor Smith will get it now. He'll play it ahead. Here's Hawk. Hawk in across the red line. He'll drop it in and Menard will give chase. Menard trying to get to the puck. Makes a big hit on Connor Nixon. It comes loose. Kazarian on the half boards. Puts it towards the net. It's there in front. Brown, big hit. Takes down Trevor Houston. And the puck is corralled by Ainsley. Ainsley in the winter off zone. Throws it ahead. Miles McLean has it. He's going to start ahead. In across the Durham line. Shot. That hits a stick and goes into the corner. McLean has it now. Looking for Elder in front, but he cannot get it to him. Matheson throws it all the way around. Bruce can't come up with it. He's got it there now. Brown takes him in. Shot. Flagler, big save. Jeff Flagler, massive glove save. Puck is up into the netting, and we have a stoppage in play. 16-24 to go here in overtime. 5-5 five, five is the score. Face off coming up here to the right of Jeff Wagler. Nick Quaid corrals it off a McLean face off win. It's up to Elder. On the point, he cannot corral it. Back to Tom Longland. He throws it up to Randy Cox, who dumps it in. But the puck comes back to Cox in the neutral zone, and he'll fire it across. Elder almost blocked that one, but Hutchison threw, or Bruce threw it in, excuse me. McDermott can't come up with it, and it's back to uh, Josh Hopkin. Hopkin ahead to McDermott. McDermott, in across the line, he still has the puck. Oh, what a move, McDermott, oh my goodness. Almost had a chance to finish, but he just had to go off his skate, and, or his stick, excuse me, and he could not bury. What a chance for Brent McDermott. Here's the play now, in across, Chris Brown, shot, blocked, to the net, Randy Cox. Oh, and there's a the play. Nick Quaid took his man down, and away come the Winterhawks. Connor Patton across the red line, in across his own. He looks to the front of the net and he can't find anybody. Trevor Smith, oh no! And the Winter Hawks will be whistled for too many men on the ice as Trevor Smith played the puck before the other Winter Hawk player was able to get off the ice. And it's gonna be a too many men on the ice penalty for the Soggy Shores Winter Hawks, I do believe. Is it or is it not? Yes, it is. Connor Patton will serve the penalty. It's a bench minor. Too many men on the ice. A devastating blow to the Winter Hawks here as they have to kill yet another Durham Thundercats power play. They're second in overtime. It's a back to Tatey who plays it all the way down the ice. And the Thundercats will come back to get it. You got to believe that Greg Tatey is playing for everything he's worth as it could potentially be his last game tonight. That puck thrown into the center and intercepted. Nice play there by Andy Fraz. He goes after it with Mitchell, but he can't come up with it. Chris Brown goes the other way. Three Thundercats across the blue line. Brown plays it in the middle, and Hutchinson can't come up with it. Hutchinson allowed to turn and shoot. That just missed the net. On the blocker side of Flagler. It's off the glass and out and down the ice. Burt will come out to play it. He'll stop it for Kyler Nixon. Nixon turns and moves toward the blue line, but he turns back because Mitchell was going off on a change. Kyler Nixon plays it deep into the zone. Wagner out to stop it. Throws it around the boards, but do a thunder, or Thundercat. Graham will play it to Bill Terpstra. Terpstra. Looking for a man. Finds Matheson at the point. Matheson back to Terpstra. Terpstra shoots. Oh my goodness. And there it is. Justin Graham 
scores the goal for the Thundercats. And that will do it. On the power play with 38 seconds left to go in the power play, Justin Graham with the shot coming in, Jeff Flagler was unable to corral it. It fell into the crease and Justin Graham, the first one there, buried the net or buried the, buried the goal that knocks the Winter Hawks out of the first round of the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League. An unbelievable finish to this one, but it is the Durham Thundercats coming out on top. Justin Graham with the winner, and this series is over. The Thundercats sweeping out the Soggin Shores Winterhawks, four games to nothing, winning the final score here six to five in favor of the Durham Thundercats. And the Wismer House player of the game in his final game as a Soggin Shores winner hawk is number seven, Greg Tatey, who had two assists on the evening. This is a unfortunate end to the winter hawk season. They did their best and hats off to this Durham Thundercats team. As much as people want to say that I may be homered a little for the Winter Hawks, which is understandable, this Durham Thundercats team, you got to tip your cap to them. They were the better team in the series, although a shot or two either way in this series is completely different. But unfortunately for the Winter Hawks, it ends here. Three one goal games in the series. Three one goal games in the series. Games one, two, and game number four. As the Winter Hawks fall, six to five, the final for the Durham Thundercats. Well, unfortunately, I'm put into a rather tough position here because I was asked to come in and do spot duty for the Soggin Shores Winter Hawks play-by-play -play tonight. I did not want it to go this way, I must admit. But unfortunately, the season does end for the Soggin Shores Winter Hawks. I'd uh, personally like to thank Jordan McKinnon for all of his hard work this year covering the Soggin Shores Winter Hawks. He does a tremendous job on the play-by-play -play every game that he can get out to. And the coverage is just incredible. And I know myself on TST Total Sports Talk could not do the work that I do without the assistance of Jordan McKinnon. And also I want to thank Victoria Serta for all of her hard work, uh, constantly running the Soggin Shores Winter Hawks Twitter feed and the camera. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure all season long for the Soggin Shores Winter Hawks. Andrew Rogers signing off for everybody here at the Plex in Port Elgin.